Financial, the home of everything that rocks. My name is Mel O and I'm your certified financial planner. So today we're gonna to talk about FDIC insurance. Now, FDIC insurance stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And FDIC insurance came out of the New Deal with FDR after the Great Depression. Now, after the Great Depression happened, people tried during the beginning of it, they tried to pull their money out of banks, but the banks closed and declared bank holidays because they had actually lost their clients' money in the stock market. Sound familiar? Anyway, so when the people went to the banks, they couldn't get in, so they closed it, they didn't have the money. So of course, needless to say, after this happened, nobody trusted banks and wanted to put their money back in banks. So in order for our economy to work, we need people to put money in banks, okay? So what FDR did is he said, okay, we're gonna create the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and we're gonna guarantee your money dollar for dollar up to $100,000. Now, back in the day, $100,000 was nothing to sneeze at. And people, of course, felt comfortable and they started putting their money back into banks and off we went. During the 2008 financial crisis, and to about to the beginning of 2009, they actually raised that amount from 100,000 to 250,000 to have it insured with the FDIC. Now, can you have more than $250,000 insured under FDIC insurance? Yeah, you absolutely can. But I'm not gonna get into that here. So if you have questions, hit me up and I'll kind of explain it to you. So when we're talking about FDIC insurance, we're talking about checking, savings, and CDs, okay? Most, if not almost all investments are not FDIC insured, okay? So you might wonder why people would put money in an investment versus in something that's FDIC insured. Now, just because it's not FDIC insured does not mean it's risky. And it also doesn't mean it's gonna have crazy fluctuations, okay? So for instance, treasuries, all right? So for those of you who are around my age, you remember the little girl and she would walk to the top dresser drawer of her um, her uh, dresser and open it up and the, the speak over would say some crap like, oh, you know, every year Susie got a little bond and blah, 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 and she'd wrap it in this little ribbon and a whole bunch of crap. Anyway, um, somehow at the end of those 18 years, that stack of EE bonds got her through college which even in the 80s is highly questionable, but whatever. So when you buy a series EE bond, which is the normal bond people buy when they think of treasury bonds or savings bonds, whatever, you buy it for 25 bucks, and at some point in the future, 15 to 20 years, it's worth $50, okay? So people invest in those and they feel very safe, but those are not FDIC insured, okay? They are backed by the taxing power of the federal government. Money market accounts. Money market accounts are an ultra conservative investment. Investment, it is not FDIC insured. Now, a lot of times a bank will try to confuse you and they'll say, hey, come put money in our money market savings account, okay? Savings account. The fact that it says savings dictates that it's FDIC insurance. Of course, you go, oh, money markets have higher paying yields than savings accounts. I'm gonna go put my money in a money market savings account. Guess what, guys? It's the same crap, okay? They're, you're still putting your money in a savings account and it's not paying you any higher. Money market accounts do typically pay higher yields. That's because they're not FDIC insured. So watch out for that kind of stuff. So if you guys have any other questions on this or you wanna tell me how great I am, you can feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Mel Rocks Money or feel free to send me an email at mel at Hot Moon Financial.